Hello screenwriters and welcome to Writing for Screens, the screenwriting step-by-step -step project chapter 83. Uh, my name is Glenn Gers. I am writing for screens right in front of your eyes every weekday, if I can make it, Monday through Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I am here to show you my process for writing a script to take you with me from the rough idea through the outline. We're now in the rough draft, doing it scene by scene. And then when we get done with that, we are going to rewrite it and make it into a polished finished draft. I am showing you this process. It is my process, not the only process, not the best process, not the guarantee to succeed process, just the one that I figured out during my 25-year career as a movie and screen writer here in California. And I am now teaching screenwriting here on YouTube, so I thought it would be sort of a cool way to teach it is to show you, let you look over my shoulder, let you share my screen step by step uh, so that you can see what it's like. Demystify the process and give you some sense of what the everyday work is. So that is what we are going to do starting right now. We are we are in the final section of the script. We are we are getting to the third act. Uh, we still got a ways to go. So let us take a look here at the outline. Um, hmm. It said audio system muted when I did that, which is weird. I'm assuming you guys can hear me. If you can't hear me, let me know. Uh, the sound levels say my microphone is working, but you just never know. You never know what one has done. <laughs> okay, so um, yesterday we we learned more about the character of McLean. We we uh, we showed him failing to to meet a cute guy because he was just too much of a Sherlock Holmes, just compulsively. Um, so now we need to do a little bit of scenes of him alone in his life, and then we're going to get to Shrimpton. That's today's mission. Um, all right. So um, if those of you who are watching right now can tell me, <laughs> can you hear me? Just just let me know. Ah, okay. Thank you. It just freaked me out. Sometimes, you know, there'll be a little notice at the bottom of the screen, and it said audio disabled or something, and I was like, what the f Anyway, hi, 234 Pika Pika. Welcome. I hope all is well with you. Um, all right. So um, we are now going to go to McLean. Just a couple of quick shots um, of, of McLean. Uh, we were going to intercut to, to suggest the, the, the loneliness, emptiness, and isolation that he is living in. Um, Hmm. And the problem is, <laughs> I have sort of painted myself into a corner here. Um, this has to be at the same time. I, I'm picturing sort of lonely coming home at night kind of thing, except this is the morning. This was early in the morning. Um, so so the, the images I first had in my head of, of loneliness were a guy sitting on an empty subway car or a bus or walking and coming to his apartment at, alone at night. Natural images, no, no genius points for that, except this is actually, he was just in the gym on his way in to work because this is morning. We are intercutting with uh, the, the idea is that these are three uh, little vignettes of these characters at the same time that Madeline and Norman are sleeping in, having spent the night together. So I got to rethink. I got to rethink him alone. Uh, it's not impossible. We can do it. Um, here. Exterior. Wall Street. Morning. Okay, so
buzzing hive of Lower Manhattan. Uh, the classic, the classic buzzing hive of Lower Manhattan. Uh, <laughs> Lisa, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for, for watching and commenting. That's cool for me. Uh, I, I am happy to be doing this. Um, if this is helpful to you, I am happy that, that that makes me feel like it's worth putting in all these hours every day. Uh, so, so cool. Well, not, not hours every day. Hours. Every day, I do an hour. <laughs> okay, so... Um, All we really need here, um, interior Wall Street office. Uh, the same, the same time. Now this is actually going to be the same time as another scene. What I'm doing is I'm I have been writing all of McLean scenes, um, McLean scenes, um, and then all of Dundowski scenes, and then I'll do all of Shrimpton scenes, and then later. I'm going to cut and paste and move them around a little so that they're interwoven uh, so that we get a sense of almost montage, but more like, um, and, and by the way, I'll trim it down to make sure that it's, it's flowing, that you're, that you're saying, ah, this is, all these things are connected by these people's um, relationship. Uh, rows of desks with... Uh, what's what's the word? I'm I'm thinking of uh, uh, you know how when somebody has a lot of screens, uh, walls of desks, roses walled in with multiple monitors. Uh, desks. Rows of desks walled in with their, their multiple monitors. The factory of financial finance. The factory of finance. Ooh, we're getting fancy. Uh, Lisa. Uh, it's very helpful for me and my students. Oh, cool. Hey, that is great. I I um I, I welcome uh, any questions for you guys, first time writers who are trying to learn. Uh, I I hope that this is helpful. Um, please ask me if there's stuff you need to know. Um, I, I I hope that mostly you'll learn just by watching me do it. But uh, but certainly feel free to speak up. That is what this is about. Uh, a multi-display setup, indeed. That is what we are getting at. Um, <laughs> the Gers Gang. <laughs> uh, you can have that copyright. Um, I, I, I don't think I'll be using it, Alexander, but I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, everybody's back. That is cool and groovy. I am glad. Um, McLean sits at his cramped workspace, a desk in a row, row of desks, Dow, row, <laughs> one, one desk in a long packed row of desks walled in. Um, okay, so
I'm the catcher. Okay, so that's all we need. We gotta just get the idea that um, the crime catcher podcast. That's not. That's that's just a different one. The point is that is that we are just getting a sense that uh, bo 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 bo. there is an extra a. There could e packed a row in a long packed. There we go. Thank you, Maria. <laughs> uh, Hello, Natasha. Hello. <laughs> yes, it is. They just picked up the trash outside. That is, that is how it is. Sounds like a German disco. Wow, I had no idea my sound was, I guess I got it turned up a little high, the, the gain, um, which is nice because I can speak in a normal voice. But yeah, yeah, the trucks are, the trucks are out there. Uh, taking care of business, which, which frankly, I am glad they are. I am not going to complain if, if we have a little bit uh, a noise now and then. If somebody, you know, somebody's going up and down the streets collecting my garbage, at least I can do is let them make a little noise. Uh, that's, that's my take. It's a hot take. Okay. Hot take. All right. Oh my gosh. We're at 58 pages. Look at that. 58 pages already, and we aren't even in the third act. All right. Let us, uh, okay. Clean part two. Okay. So this is good. Boop, boop. And thus we move ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so let's get to, to Nurse Shrimpton because this is going to be good. Uh, hmm. Okay, so interior. Now, does she work in a hospital? Does she work in a long-term care facility? What are we going to give her? Um, I say hospital. Just to make it clear. Hospital. 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 Boy, <laughs> you would think I knew how to type. Uh, hospital. Morning. Boom. Okay. Um, so, Nurse Shrimpton. Uh, okay, where, where I am? Okay. How, how painful do I want this to be? Because the thing is, whatever this is, she needs to be uh, working with a patient who she spent time with. In other words, it's someone that she has a, a banter with. Um, most hospitals try to get their patients out as soon as possible uh, because <laughs> actually they're more likely to get sick in the hospital. There's just more germs floating around and people get sick when they're in the hospital sometimes. So they try to, once someone can get out of the hospital, they try and get them out. Um, so uh, the point is, I don't know that I want to have someone in a bed because that, that it, it just doesn't say like, this is a long relationship. So what I was thinking was, do we want her to be attending to people who are getting chemotherapy. So they're in chairs with, with uh, IVs, or should this be more of like a dialysis kind of thing? Um, it's something where she can make small talk while she takes care of business. Um, you know what, yeah, let's just, let's just go all out. Let's make it chemotherapy. Uh, it, it's, it's a good, it, it is a good, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too, but um, actually I just don't know that much about that. I think I'm going to stick with um, moving from patient is, um, actually let's, let's um, chemotherapy treatment room handful of recliner chairs 
patience on IV drips. Some in better shape than others. Nurse Shrimpton is attending to them kind and efficient. Um, okay. So, uh, Yes, 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 uh, yes, that is true. Um, I, um, hey, came out there. oh, look at that, I, I saved a line. Um, <laughs> okay. Attending to, here, watch this. This is how we make sentences more active. Nurse is attending to Handful of patients in recliner chairs on IV drips. On is you are on, on an IV, but I don't know if that. So I'm going to say with IV drips. Complicated IV drips. Plugged into. <laughs> Plugged into complicated IV drips. Shrimpton is kind and efficient with all of them. Let's just make that lowercase so that Maria feels comfortable. <laughs> How's that? Uh, okay, so um, uh, this one sentence is, uh, you know what? Boop. Kind and efficient. Boop, 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 boop. Kind and efficient is just a description of, of nurse trip. Kind of is, is attending to a handful of writers. Um, so now look at that. We have taken, we have gotten compressed all that information into, oh look, now you can see what I'm doing. Sorry, I forget my head is in the way sometimes. My big old head. All right. Um, so uh, uh, okay, so now we need to have, so who is she speaking to? Um, who is she speaking to? Let's see. Uh, so it should be someone. Huh. <laughs> um, okay, now my first instinct was someone sort of old, um, someone that she could banter with, but in a. Um, and I, I'm actually thinking that. Um, Mrs. Weitzman, Mrs. Weitzman, elderly woman, and elderly woman, an elderly woman in a wig. Ray Merlin is commenting. Hello, good day, good day. Uh, cool, that's all right. Oh my gosh, 1.20 a.m., go to sleep. <laughs> uh, that, 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 I am really glad, that is great. If, um, if, if anything I do can be helpful to you, that is kind of the point. That's why I'm here, so it is really groovy for me. If, if you can take your time out at 1.20 a.m., um, I'm glad that the advice was helpful. Please feel free to ask questions if you have any, when you have them, you can just, oh, let's just, let's just make this clear. Boom. Uh, uh, remember, you can ask questions on writingforscreens.com. That's that big blue line there. That's my website. And you can ask a question there by going to contact us. And that way, even if it's, 
2.30 in the morning and you are sound asleep when I am doing this, uh, don't forget you can just ask a question here in the comment section. Um, but I really am grateful, uh, Ray Merlin, for your uh, dropping in just a bit to, to, to communicate, to connect. Dynamite. I also like your your, uh, your little image there, that little anime person. I'm not sure who it is, but I like the style. Um, okay, and Shira, how are you? Nice to see you all. Um, I capitalize every character name in all my descriptions without fail. That is too much. <laughs> uh, thank you. That is fine. Okay, let's get back to this scene. Um, Hmm. <sighs> she checks the uh, drips for Schweitzman. Yeah, you know, I'm going to call her Weitzman. Weitzman. Um, Sarah, Sarah, I will tell you, I am using Final Draft. Um, you do not have to use Final Draft. Um, I use it because uh, 20 years ago or so, uh, 25 years ago, when I started working professionally, um, the companies that I was working with, they say, we use Final Draft, so I was using what they used. Uh, most or many Hollywood companies use Final Draft, I believe, but I know quite a number of, of uh, writers. I was just talking to one uh, last night. He's like, I hate Final Draft. I use scriptware or a movie magic or people use all sorts of different things. Uh, you should use whatever you can afford Board to use because Final Draft costs a bundle of dollars. Um, it's excellent, but if you do not have the money, do not stress over it. Use what you can afford. There are some free ones that make you put their logo on it. Also, you can write a script just with the formatting on your word processing. I have pages because I use Apple. The, it, you can do it in Google Docs. You can format it. I have a uh, oh, do I not have this? Okay, um, there is a video that I made about script formatting called Script Formatting Made Easy. Do I have this here? Do, 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 do. No, I do not. I will, I will get you this. Hang on. You know what? Hang on. Just hold on for a second. I am going to go to the internet right at this moment and, and get this. Um, so that I can show you, so that I can make live, live thumbs, live stream thumbs. Oh, and that failed. Okay, there we go. Script format made easy. Download. Boom. Hold on, hang on. Just don't panic. <laughs> Nobody worry. All right, watch this. Watch this. Here we go. There we go. Look at that. Um, that is that is the the name. This is this is a. Uh, you can find this. <laughs> All right, that script format made easy. Um, it shows you what every single one of these format lines is all about. There are only six types. There is the slug line. Hold on. This is a slug line, they call it, or a scene line. This is an action or scene description line. This is character name. This is dialogue. Anyway, so you can, you can format those yourself. Um, according to This is Kitschy, fade in 
is uh, cheap and great. I'm glad to hear that, and I, I second it just because I, I trust my people. <laughs> uh, you are welcome. Okay, so. Uh, ah, boop, boop, boop. And the message is the character. Cool. Neat. Uh, I, I love anime. I do not get to watch enough anime, but I my son has told me the story of a whole pile of them, and it's really great. Um, Libra Office. Free Office. Setting it up. Uh, alt. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Maria says, oh, Google Docs or Word have script formats you can start with for free. I believe that. Okay, so... Now, let's get back to the game. Uh, how are we today, Mr. Zoids? Um, I don't know how we are. How are we today? We have been better. Carol. We have been better, Carol. your detective show how's your detective thing going detect how's that how's your detective game how's your detective game going how's your detective thing going You know what? I don't have time for that. Let's just do this. We feel crappy. Take my mind off. <laughs> we feel crappy. <laughs> we feel crappy. Take my mind off. How's it? Uh, okay, yeah, this is better. This is better. We're getting right to it. We feel crappy. Take my mind off. How's your detection? script but dabbling with a novel good not in English also good you should write in your own language because yeah um, yeah I this is something that, that took me a long time to, to recognize is how much uh, novels and um, novels and and scripts overlap in so many ways obviously some of the actual presentation the form um, is different, but the basic storytelling conception, um, it, I think it, I think it overlaps a lot. And I'm really glad that, that thinking that way helps you. That is, uh, that is, I believe that's why I am not, I'm work, going to be working on a novel when I get done with this 
class uh, ex YouTube experience, um, I have a novel that I've outlined that I'm eager to actually start writing, and I feel confident I'll be able to do it because I am just going to try and write it the way I write a script, just like this, but without the format. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad, Pika Pika. Um, did I see a question about copyright? Let me, it, it went up, I missed it. I did not, oh, um, okay, this is a goodie. Uh, how important is it to get copyright? Um, here's the deal on that. Let me, let me take a little break to, to, to copyright. Okay, here we go. Um, here's the deal, copyright.gov and wga.org, two websites where you can get um, your, protect your work. Um, I will put that up again in a second, but just, copyright is the governmental legal protection for any creative work that can be registered. They have a very clear set of definitions on what can and can't be um, on copyright.gov. There you go. Um, WGA.org has a thing called script registry, script registration, and they uh, mainly specialize in, in scripts because it's the Writers Guild, it's the Screenwriters Union. Um, but the, the advantages and disadvantages, copyright is a serious 75-year uh, coverage, legal uh, binding protection, but it's also really expensive. Um, if you're churning out a bunch of scripts and you just need to, I think it's five years for WGA registry. Um, for a much, much less money, you can have your script registered at the WGA. You go on their website, look for script registration, click that, they will explain it all. Um, uh, there's some forms, they're very easy to fill out. Um, on both, they're pretty easy, but I think the Writers Guild is actually easier. Anyway, this is, this is how you register your work. Okay, you go to one of those two sites. Should you do it? How important is it? Because that was the question. The answer is, it is important to keep a copy just to be super safe. Yeah, you absolutely should keep a copy. Honestly, they famously, if you were to print out a copy of your script, put it in the mail, mail it to yourself and leave it unopened, the postage uh, the, 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 the postage stamp, not the stamp, but the, the um, marker that it went through the post office would count as copyright registry. Like you could then take it to a lawyer in case of an emergency and say, look, I wrote this on that date um, or it was written before that date. The main thing is for the price of a WGA registration, it is worth doing. It is not that big a deal. Um, People will generally not steal your stuff. They just won't. It's, that's a bad business for them to be in. It doesn't make any sense for them if they are in the movie business, if their business is to option scripts, why would they not just do that? Um, they might accidentally uh, you know, read your script, remember something about it, six months later not remember where it came from and suggest it to someone else, that can happen. It mostly doesn't. And if it did, the odds that that thing would become a big deal that got made are teeny, 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 tiny. So yeah, you should keep a copy. It's a good thing to get it registered or copyrighted. It is not something you should get crazy about. They are more afraid of getting sued by you than you are of them stealing your work. <laughs> Just, you know, it's like it's like the, the spiders and the... And, things like that. They're going to run away from you more than you are going to have to fear them. Um, all right. <laughs> um, okay. So, so the answer is, should you copyright? Yeah. 85, I think, I think 85 is, is the, um, is the government copyright. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would just say the easiest thing is go to wga.org, go to there, the, on that first page there, there will be something that says script registry or script registration. Anyway, that, I think it's $30 now. Anyway, it's considerably cheaper. It doesn't last as long, but it is safe enough. Um, the the value of, of, of registering is, is serious, but the importance of not getting your stuff stolen 
is, I mean, yeah, it's it's a legal issue. It's not your biggest problem in life. Don't don't stress over it. Just get it registered and move on. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I had a feeling. 85, 85 is pretty steep, especially because with scripts and stuff, ideally you'll be writing a lot of them. Ideally, you don't want to have to just keep doing that. Um, if somebody wants your script, you do have to copyright it before you sell it to them because they're buying the copyright. Um, yeah, look into the WGA, WGA.org. Okay. Um, uh, no, no, actually. No, sir. No, no. Um, no, no. Okay. Oh, um, no, I'm, I'm taking a break from all that, all that right now. All that right now. Hmm. Why? You were so into it. You were so in, so into it. She wouldn't say into it. You were so enthusiastic. You were so enthusiastic. This is not the greatest dialogue I've ever written, but it will serve. Um, well, okay. Does she tell the truth here? That's the question. Does she? Um, uh, some people get too. You were so. It was such a big thing for you. Some people get too involved. You liked it so much. You liked it so much. It was, it was, that was, that was, that was, well, that was, that was all I knew about you. It's Shirley Holmes. <laughs> Shirley. It's Shirley Holmes. It's Shirley Holmes. Nurse. Shirley Holmes. Nurse detective. Nurse. Merce. Nurse detective. Nurse detective. This right there. Well, some people do get too involved. I thought that was the whole idea. Oh. Oh. Drama. Drama. Some people get too involved. Oh, drama. <laughs> drama. Mm -hmm. Drama. Drama. I was so. Some people get too involved. Ooh, 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 drama. And we had drama in our book club. Mahjong. <laughs> Mahjong in our bridge club. Drama, we had drama in our book club. 
I'll say, oh, somebody, somebody wasn't paying her a full share. That's comedy, yeah. Um, I don't know. Accusations, 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 threats. Somebody with accusations, threats. Somebody wasn't paying full, full share for snacks and drinks, for the snacks and drinks, accusations, threats. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. yeah, that's, uh, that was, yeah, that was, oh my God. yeah, but yeah, if you add in serial killers, <laughs> Need all this about the book club? No. And, well, you're better off. Oh, sorry. I do not need all that. It was an interesting riff, but but the fact is, ooh, oh, kind of, kind of. I think so. Serial killers, it's that's creepy. That's that's not nice. What kind of what kind of people do that? What kind of people do that? You should get a nice hobby. That's better. Okay. That's better. All right. Yeah, I think I'll just leave it at that. Okay. Okay. That look at that. We got a scene. We got we got a whole scene here. Um, what, I, what I did there with Mrs. Weitzman, this is kind of a thing you should know about. It's really easy to start having some minor character riffing and becoming more interesting than your lead character. Um, you get the minor character to be all flamboyant, and next thing you know, your scene is about somebody who doesn't matter, and your main character is, is forgotten. They're, they're, they're the straight man. That is never a good idea, ever. <laughs> um, if, the, if that person who's talking is not really, really contributing to the story, you don't want them to be more interesting than the lead character. So 
That is, that is the, there endeth the lesson. That is today's lesson. Don't sacrifice your lead characters for some riff that, because you come up with some funny person who talks funny. That's easy to do and bad to do. So there you go. Um, and with that, I think I am giving you my, my blessings for the weekend. I hope you guys uh, will go write something because that is the point. I am doing this so that you say, oh, I want to write something. If he can do it, <laughs> any moron can, can take care of this stuff. So go out there. Go write something.